Uh, first, I just want to thank everyone um, for attending this panel discussion today on engaging hospitals in collaborative research projects. So my name is Shakima Prince. I work for the Center for Bioengineering Biotechnology as a project manager there. And so in my role, I help uh, with some of the special multi-team uh, research projects that are going on, as well as some outreach uh, events uh, to help and researchers engage with clinicians at the hospital. So one such event is the Pizza with the Prof event, uh, which happens once a month, and I coordinate that with uh, Sarah here, we'll be talking a little bit later. And so what that does is uh, profs can go to Freeport Hospital and give a presentation to the clinical staff there and get some feedback on their research, and it sort of uh, helps them guide what they're doing uh, to what the clinical needs are. And so that's uh, been going on uh, for a couple months, we're taking a break for the summer, but we'll start again in the fall. Uh, and it's, it's pretty fun, it's pretty relaxed, it's pretty informal, and so um, it's been helping a lot of researchers connect with some of the nurses, for example, there and get some feedback. Okay, so um, on to today's event. So this will be a multi-part discussion focused on guiding UW researchers on engaging hospitals um, in research projects. And so, um, just some logistics. So today for the agenda, uh, we'll, I'll just do the opening remarks, and then we'll have our panel discussion with four members, and I'll introduce them before we start. Uh, and then the second part of uh, the discussion today is going to be on the mechanics of working with hospitals. So there are rules and guidelines and applications and such, and so uh, that information is very important to know um, in addition to some of the uh, experience, experiential learning that we'll get from our panel members. Uh, and then uh, we'll have some closing remarks, and then there'll be some time at the end where we can do some networking and you can ask additional questions. And I just want to let everyone know that uh, we'll have a question and answer session uh, at the end of the panel discussion, as well as at the end of the mechanics of, of working with hospitals, just uh, so you know when you can ask questions. So there are several researchers that are already involved in um, clinical research here at UW, and so uh, this event is really to help encourage more of this kind of collaboration. And so uh, this discussion today is very relevant given uh, the recent uh, Waterloo Threb uh, Coordinated Ethics Review process, um, which has further increase these collaborations, particularly uh, with Grand River Hospital and um, events like the meet and greets that occur often every couple months, maybe happening again-ish. We'll see, yeah? Okay, so I've been to a couple of them and they've been great. So there's always a couple, a couple people from Grand River Hospital, a couple of researchers from UW, and you get to mingle and have a speed date um, uh, where you can uh, talk about what you wanna do, clinicians talk about what they're looking to solve at the hospital, um, and it's been pretty awesome. So we're hoping that uh, this event sort of uh, helps uh, that process along and helps with the connections. So. Uh, to, I'm going to ask our panel members if they wouldn't mind uh, stepping up and having a seat, and then I'll uh, introduce everyone once they're up here. Um, you guys are in the middle for right now, and then you can okay. pass them along. No, you no one be shy about the mics. <laughs> okay, so uh, first let me introduce uh, Catherine Burns. So she's a professor in the Systems Design Engineering Department. Uh, as well, she is the director for the Center for Bioengineering Biotechnology. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, next to her is Helen Chen. So she is um, an assistant research professor in the School of Public Health and Health Systems. Um, she is also an AGFA scientist in residence and cross-appointed with the Sheraton School of uh, Computer Science. So uh, to give our clinical perspective, uh, so let me introduce Claudette DeLonardo. Uh, she's executive director of clinical and corporate common system implementation at Grand River Hospital. And then at the end, uh, we have Tina Ma. So she is vice president of planning and performance management, performance management and research at Grand River Hospital. So if we can just thank our speakers for being here. Okay. So we'd like to begin our panel today by uh, starting to talk about how to undertake collaborative research projects, uh, where to start, what some of the challenges are, um, and what are some important tips and advice uh, to make these collaborations successful. 
So we have a lot of ground to cover in a short period of time. So I'm just gonna start off by asking our panelists a few questions and then I'll turn to the audience to get some um, input from you guys. So to start with Helen. So, uh, so we've had, you've had several collaborative research projects with hospitals and healthcare institutions. So would you mind just giving us an example of one of your projects that you've engaged in? Okay, so. <laughs> and don't forget about the mic. <laughs> Yeah, so we are uh, uh, the result of the first uh, round of uh, this uh, speed dating and Pina <laughs> came and uh, we very quickly sprung into action, I guess, uh, since last year. Um, one of the project is uh, for the renal, uh, they have the renal program, it's uh, one of the largest uh, dialysis center in Ontario. So uh, they reach out to us to say, hey, let's do something together to uh, sort out, to help us to um, get the data a submission to the renal uh, Ontario Renal Network. So that actually started solving a very, very specific problem. It's, I will not call that uh, a research, and it really started from uh, almost like <laughs> execution, I would say. Yeah, so uh, our students and engineers, and we get engaged and very closely work with the Renault Center, and to get that going now, our um, system is in use, and uh, they're quite happy because they designed together with them another four or five centers and, uh, in the Ontario now express their strong interest that maybe will become so also we form a renal data management consortium and help them with that. So my first uh, in, in reaction is to say they have uh, need uh, at the operational level. If we can help them, we help them and that is to solve their problem. And then now we have the data, they have the data before they don't have a kind of a data. It's locked in the vendor system. So now they have a data. Now they can think about what we're going to do with the research. So we have the students lined up and then waiting for the research questions, and then we can build a model, and then we can generate the prediction. So something like that, that's a fall into our research domain. So that's how we progress into that. And the build on that, and I guess uh, Tina and the Clouded, and reach out to us again to say, okay, now we actually are uh, changing our system. That's where Clouded mostly are directing that effort. And uh, they say, what we're gonna do is our old data we have so many systems, their data are stored in the vendor systems. Can you help us? Can you actually help us to say what we're going to do? What is the strategy to migrate them? So again, that is based on a very specific practical needs, mm -hmm. and we get engaged. They see us a, a very good, useful partner, and then of course, and I think the relationship built and the research is just very easy to follow because now we have access, we help them to have access, and we also have access to the data now. So nice. I think that's from my specific point of view, we are very fortunate. Nice, very nice. Okay. Uh, Catherine, would you mind giving us an example of um, some of the projects that you've worked sure. on? Okay. Um, I have worked with the uh, Ottawa Hospital uh, for about 15 years on various projects. Uh, it really started with some similarities to what Helen said. It started with them approaching me. I had a, a colleague I'd known from another direction who'd started working there. And she approached me with the need that she saw that their cardiac care nurses were taking a lot of calls. Um, they were not documenting these calls, or, or they were documenting them on a piece of paper. Documentation was being lost. And what could be done from a technology standpoint to improve that? So really, they came to me with the need, and that's really how we started. Um, I was able to work with them on that project. Essentially, we built a decision support tool that was using some of the kind of leading research ideas at the time to help decision making. Um, and we did a a rollout of, of this decision-making tool which ran on a smartphone to all their cardiac care nurses and evaluated um, how it changed their practice. That was really the start of a fairly long-term relationship with the Ottawa Hospital for me. Uh, since that time, they have been very willing to host my students who are working on thesis projects to do things like observe um, workflow, observe decision-making with some of their clinicians. Um, but we've always really worked in a very tight partnership. So when I have a need, I kind of go back to her and say, this is what we're looking at with our research. Um, and she's always kind of a partner in that as well. Um, currently, I'm involved in a project that they started out. They are doing a, kind of a rollout of an electronic handover tool, which is to help um, various teams, various shifts, um, various um, kinds of practice, um, pass patients back and forth. Um, they have rolled it out to about four units, and so what we're doing right now is we're doing 
um, an evaluation of how, how it's changing their work practices between the, the units that they rolled out to and the units that they haven't rolled it out to. Um, it's really a project driven from their part, from their side. It's not, for me, a research project whatsoever, but it's, it's still kind of interesting. Um, so I'm helping them in terms of um, providing guidance on the evaluation and also be doing some modeling on the data that comes out from that. Oh, great. All right, thanks. So now getting the clinical perspective of things, um, Tina, could you let us know how Grand River has enabled some of the research to, researchers to undertake research projects at Grand River Hospital? Sure, and I'll, I'll speak to that from two perspectives. Uh, one really fundamental thing that we did um, as an organization, because we've uh, certainly participated in research in the past before we formalized our relationship with the University of Waterloo, but we grounded all of our partnerships on either students coming in um, or to some lesser extent to faculty. And those tend to have a shorter temporal longevity to those relationships. And that was creating challenges for us in, in order to establish a longer um, period with respect to lines of inquiry. And so uh, we kind of looked around the environment and said, really, this is a strategic important imperative for the organization, driven by the need to increasingly uh, produce community hospital-based evidence in terms of care, care processes, um, our, our corporate services as well. And so Leslie and I uh, met a number of years ago now, um, and, uh, and Dr. Muirhead as well talked a great deal about what this could mean to both of our institutions, uh, and then University of Waterloo very handily um, revised its strategic plan. I'm pretty sure it was because of Grand River Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> um, around um, uh, an agenda uh, for care, uh, focused uh, on around care of the older adult, which intersects perfectly and beautifully into what is really uh, a looming challenge for all healthcare systems, uh, and in particular, Grenville Hospital. We have the Freeport campus, which is 99% uh, older adults uh, greater than 75. So um, it was a great launch pad. It was a great common ground for us to establish um, a relationship at an institution level. And that is really the fundamental difference uh, that is it really very important for our clinicians and strategically important for researchers. Because now your relationship with Grand River Hospital, or any other hospital and for that matter, but specifically to Grand River Hospital, is now based on an institution to institution relationship. So your work and your um, research agenda is not truncated based on your relationship with perhaps an individual. It may be with the renal program. It would be with cancer program and not with uh, Dr. Knight who happens to be you know, the chief now, but maybe he won't be the chief later. He may move to London. Your relationship and your research would continue. Uh, it may expand if Greg Knight goes somewhere else because you know, you'll, you'll have another site, but um, that has really been a huge difference for us. And, and I think that gives us more um, I don't want to say security, more uh, continuity to what we're talking about in terms of, of research. Uh, to the more perhaps tactical uh, part of your question, Chikima, mm -hmm. is about you know, how have we fostered relationships. And, and again, that's how do we operationalize that strategic um, decision that we had uh, achieved in signing a, a memorandum of understanding between our two organizations. And so many of the things that you talked about um, and I've said this maybe to some people before, so if I repeat it, uh, I apologize. But you know, I, I'm from University of Waterloo as well, so I'm a graduate here. Paul, Paul very much knows me, and I know Paul. Um, and uh, we, uh, you know, I, I'll go into audiences at Grand River Hospital. And I said, how many people here, uh, you know, graduated from the University of Waterloo? Uh, and unless it's you know the engineering or biomed, <laughs> uh, nobody puts their hands up because there's uh, you know the connection is not with a nursing program here or mm -hmm. a medical school. And you know what? That's not a downfall. Let me tell you that that isn't um, because once you're finished your degree, once you're finished your professional degree you're working and your day-to-day -day problems aren't necessarily tied to a medical school or uh, a nursing program or a physiotherapy program. Because uh, sometimes they're involved, those institutions are sometimes involved in what I might call bench research that 
we as a community hospital, one, are not funded to do, but also because our clinicians may not have that degree of interest. Because if they wanted to do, you know, that kind of research, they might have stayed in a tertiary quaternary uh, hospital. They're interested in how can we change care at the bedside. I'm here to provide care. All these patients are mine. There's no resident or fellow necessarily between me and my patients. And so I think that's quite a different um, relationship that we can have with the university who's also interested in reducing short, uh, shortening and reducing that time from bench to, to application to commercialization. Uh, we are in a very um, uh, amazing ecosystem and uh, it's taken us this long to discover each other. And sometimes, you know, I think sociology <laughs> studies say that you, you tend to marry the person who's in like a 10 block radius of you. It just takes you a really long time to find each other. Well, this is kind of, this is kind of where we're at. And, and we've been in each other's backyard uh, for many years uh, and we're really happy to have found each other. And uh, I think the meet and greets, the, the, the um, uh, pizza with the profs, uh, and in some of the more formal um, introductions, uh, we have spawned uh, a good number of uh, research uh, lines of inquiry and research activities that ha are now a couple of years in the making and, and actual research haven't been produced. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. So, uh, Claudette, so another perspective. Yes. So, did you <clears throat> reach out to a researcher when you started your collaboration, or did the researcher reach out to you? Uh, well, it was a bit of both. So it was okay. very organic in the sense that, um, fortunately, Tina had a connection. Um, and that connection really supported an inquiry into a line that, uh, for us, answered some strategic um, directions in terms of the patient experience in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was uh, organic, it was generative, and it just kind of worked out okay. uh, that we were able to do, um, do what we wanted to do. And so when we look at you know, what that means in the clinical environment, uh, clinical environments are extremely complicated. There, are, uh, there is the culture of the organization but there's also the microculture of each individual unit within a program who has their own culture. And so the number of stakeholders that you need to engage with from a research pr perspective is quite large. And while you might think from the theoretical um, perspective that, uh, okay, we're just gonna go and talk to this person, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna implement this or execute on uh, our research question, it's not necessarily that simple. Uh, and so we had the opportunity to reach out into two of our clinical programs uh, to answer a very specific question and conduct a pilot project. Um, and that has led us to uh, reusing uh, a specific tool uh, that we validated in those populations on an ongoing basis. For us, uh, that particular project looked at the patient experience, which is the very uh, important and driving um, <clears throat> driving factor in healthcare today uh, is, is always looking at the patient experience. And for us to be able to utilize a validated tool that identifies what initiatives we can put in place so, to support and improve care and support the patient experience is highly valuable to us. Nice. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so you kind of alluded to some of the challenges that yes. might come up <laughs> when yes. you first start a, a research project. And so I think it would be good for the audience to know a little bit about what some of those challenges could be, like what some of the missteps and ex or expectations that are not quite met in the beginning. So I'm, first I'm going to turn to uh, Catherine. If you could just let us know whether you've had any challenges when you first started your research projects uh, at Ottawa Hospital, for example. Um, okay, so some of the challenges that we faced, and it was really for us to learn and learn really how to integrate our work with the culture. Um, first is getting time. We work a lot with nurses and to ask them to step away from their jobs and like do an interview or something with us for an hour is not something that they or their manager wants them to do. <laughs> so how do we solve that? Um, so what we've often done is we've tended to pay them for their time and we write that into our budgets. Okay, And then it seems to work a lot better. Uh, another challenge we've had is how do we get patients to, if we want to talk to a patient after um, they've been at the hospital and we want them to stay an hour later, how do we handle that to encourage that? Um, we found parking compensation being very persuasive because hospital parking is 
really expensive. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's worked fairly well. Um, you know, working very tightly with our, with our person at the hospital. She's been the one who takes us through, like Claudette said, through all those stakeholders, and she knows them very well. I can't know them, um, so I have to wait until she kind of gives a go-ahead and she says, I've talked to this one, I've talked to that one, this one's worried about that. You know, and we'd really let her guide that, and we do exactly what she says. Um, teaching my students, okay, I once had a student that was up at the Ottawa Hospital for observations, and she could have been in one of two units, and we had, you know, unit supervisors who were in charge of her, and then we had one day where, like, one was like, well, she's not in my unit, is she in your unit? She's not in my unit. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so we've had to spend a fair bit of time with our students, like, you need to be checking in. You know, this is not independent for you. Um, everybody needs to know where you are at every time. You know, so a lot of pre-training of our students so that they um, know that they're listeners, they know how to stay in the background, they know when not to interfere, something's going on. Um, they know what exposures to patient information, they should not be putting themselves in that situation so that they step away from things like that. Uh, yeah, because that can cause immediate stress and friction on the relationship immediately if you've got a student who, and they don't even necessarily think of it, sometimes they're just really engaged and intellectually curious and they think it's okay because they live in a very, work in a very free environment here um, to understand, to adapt to that culture. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Claudia, they understand. Is, yeah. is there anything that you'd like to add to that since you kind of alluded to it before? Well, I, th I think you've hit on the key points. It's, and it's all about communication. So, you know, regardless of what you're doing, what's the single most important factor is communication. So communication to check in, to uh, understand roles and responsibilities of all of the parties involved, and really to connect with that clinical team. Also to escalate issues as they arise. Uh, you can't wait because... Uh, while you're in that clinical environment, you're not only developing relationships with patients, you're also developing relationships with staff. And uh, healthcare personnel can be tough. They're, they're, they're tough cookies. Um, and it's all about that relationship. Yeah. And so, uh, y you know, you want to make sure that that's uh, solidified and the communication is upfront and transparent at the very beginning. Uh, it's easy to make a misstep on both parties' uh, parts. But uh, it's, it's, again, that communication. And so I, I was just chuckling when you said you, know, you couldn't find the person. That's, that, that happens. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, really, um, I, I can't underscore the uh, importance of connecting with specific individuals mm -hmm. uh, if you need to escalate and then escalate further uh, if required to the investigative team. So Great. really important. Awesome, thanks. Uh, Helen, is there anything that you'd like to add as far as you were kind of chuckling to a student experience? <laughs> okay, well, or, I just have a yeah, or something you've I learned remember, in this I process? I already know. Yeah. <laughs> that email. <laughs> okay, so I think, yeah, it is <laughs> so true. Our students, uh, they are all very eager souls, and in the hospital, you, you really are, you have to say, even you go look into the, we have, we actually even have a Grand River ID. We are fully embedded mm -hmm. in there. I have an email, Grand River email <laughs> there, even for that. And uh, I think that uh, dealing with a uh, patient uh, uh, information, it's a very different matter than our students can ever imagine. Sometimes can even I myself can imagine. I teach this subject. Uh, for example, if you're actually looking at analysis application and then you have a group of students and now we are, uh, mind you, we have the Grand River ID uh, uh, there and then still, and if you just look at it, if you pull, in order to fully demonstrate that function, they have to pull a real patient information, then they actually have to record who and the access to where, how many people are watching that particular thing, and they have recorded, they have to have a pre-approval. Currently, you have to say, okay, yeah, you can do that. And then we can actually schedule a meeting, something like that. So our students actually never even can imagine to begin to imagine. That is one thing I think, again and again, if you step on the wrong toe and then you end up, uh, it becomes very difficult for you to have any access and uh, that's caused a lot of unnecessary problems. Mm -hmm. But they are, those regulations are there to protect the patient information when they will be patient ourselves as well. So that's actually for the reason. Another is that I find that um, 
the language. And uh, you were thinking, mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> a patient's address is address, right? <laughs> but, but, but they actually each, uh, they have a very specific type of uh, language. They call a particular thing. So like a system, you call uh, charts, and then some people call the HED. If you call the wrong name, then they end up uh, actually don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so so uh, again, when you're actually looking uh, to uh, uh, actually do things and collect the data, even really to just work for them, to serve them purely for their purpose, you, you actually need to learn. And that's actually take a long time for us to truly understand the terms they use, the language they use. They use a different kind of language, so to speak. Take us for quite a few months to understand that, that particular field they call that particular name so that you can actually communicate, not just the English language. They have their own particular term and as well, different, sometimes different programs call a particular thing different names too. So that's, I find, it's also very important, yeah. right? Yeah. To get, so the meaning of the data, even the application, yeah. yeah. So that, that is also part of the communication, I would okay. find. Yeah. So with Grand River as an example, being a community hospital, I mean, I'm sure that there are some limitations in the number of research projects that could be going on there at one time. So uh, Tina, could you just maybe talk a little bit about the challenge in engaging research projects as a community hospital and maybe talk about some of the, the number of projects that are going on there and if there's a cap right now in the number of projects? Sure. Uh, to answer your last question, there isn't a cap. So there's no place or policy that says we will do X number and when we reach that number we stop. Um, I think uh, there's probably a few different ways to answer your question. Um, I think at any one point in time, we have about 50 different research initiatives on the go um, uh, per year. Uh, and uh, we introduce probably about 12 to 13, would you say, Sarah, per year? And some of them uh, get extensions, and so we might jump up to you know 65 or so, and then they, they conclude and, and they, they, they close off. But on average, I think we have about 50. Uh, and to that extent, I would say about 75% of those are cancer clinical trials. And so we have a, a large cancer program uh, that's uh, very invested in, in participating in, in um, participating in active, actively being a site for multi-site um, research. So we have, um, I don't know, how many oncologists do we have? Do you know? Anyways, I, I would think I would say I think it's probably fair to say that every single one of them are involved in a clinical trial, mm -hmm. uh, clinical <clears throat> drug trial, and uh, and so there is no I don't uh, ever hear from them to say okay this is the end. What you what I do hear though uh, very uh, strongly from that group is if it makes sense for their patients to be involved in that clinical trial, they will advocate until they can get into that clinical trial. So where they're, so it, it, and, and that may be perhaps a, a, a slight nuance or a difference between community hospital versus um, tertiary quaternary is that the focus um, is not necessarily on uh, uh, brand new discovery. So at this time, uh, and I'll, I'll be careful to say that at this time, we won't be taking um, stage one clinical drug trials, right? So, so we're not gonna have a one case study and one patient is going to try a drug that nobody has ever tried except on animals before. Um, but two, three absolutely levels, we, we participate. And, and so th I think that's a, a really active and mature part of our research agenda at the hospital. Uh, where we, I've kind of forgot your question, Jackie. It's okay. <laughs> it's just the challenge. No, you're, you're addressing it, it perfectly. It's like the challenges of being a community hospital and having these research projects coming in. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So, yeah. Thank you. Wow. You're doing, you're doing perfect. <laughs> this is being recorded. <laughs> you'll, you'll clip that part, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I think the other uh, place uh, that uh, will generate research and, and forge really positive relationships is that I think as we establish these working relationships, it's like a contagion, like a positive contagion. Um, uh, I've had a number of clinicians come up to me and say, hey, what, what is Dr. So-and-so doing? Uh, meaning MD, Dr. So-and-so. Because uh, I heard he's working with somebody up at the university, and how come I don't have that chance? And so I think it's that kind of engagement um, as a grassroots uh, 
um, uh, spread that will uh, spark the interest for perhaps some clinicians who have not necessarily thought it was possible to do research. Uh, and to quote uh, one of our interventional radiologists, he came from Boston and, and he said, you know, if I chose to work in Kitchener-Waterloo area because I like the size of the community, I like the, um, the, the school system, I like the proximity to a metro, center, metro area without having to live there, um, the cost of living is great, I get great uh, diversity in my patient population, you know, great... Um, uh, capital capacity around me, so the equipment around him, there's, you know, there's an agenda there to maintain and, and modernize and stay modernized. And he said, if I could do one more thing, it would be to be actively involved in research. And he said that to me probably about four years ago, um, and when he, I think he was like two years here, I might have that timeline a little bit wrong, but nevertheless, he came to one of our meet and greets, so Dr. Vic Venkatesh, <coughs> and, and, um, and so he actually st struck up a, a, a conversation with somebody or asked some, when someone approached him. And he's now been engaged in a very active, generative discussion with uh, someone here at the University of Waterloo in talking about something he's been germinating for uh, probably a while. And suddenly someone said, well, I have this thing. I don't really know how to use it, but I think it'd really be great. And I think we, can, we should talk about this. And so I think there's really a, a multifaceted way in which we can be involved. We do have the limitation because we are a community hospital. We're not a teaching hospital, so we're not funded to do research. But that doesn't mean there's not an interest. And, and I think if there's an interest, uh, you know, we can always look to find ways and build ways in which we can participate in research. Um, and maybe to point to a particular example, uh, we've partnered um, uh, over the last year uh, um, uh, for, uh, in three uh, substantial grants, largely initiated from the University of Waterloo. Uh, and we heard early this year uh, that one of them was successful. Um, and so uh, we are now starting to work on that initiative and having um, and I think, I can't remember who said it. Oh, it was you, Catherine. Uh, with respect to, we pay people to provide care. I mean, that's what we do. Um, but if, if it's an hour or a day or a week that is required, you know, if we can plan that ahead and if there can be funding available for that, we can actually then backfill. But it, it requires a little bit of planning. Uh, and and I, we know that if we have a share in that agenda, that research agenda, it's very easy to make the case that we participate because we know it'll make and improve care at the bedside. Um, and I'll just put one additional facet to that comment is that um, I think the posture of Grand Hospital is very much uh, evolving and maturing as well. That yes, it's that immediacy of delivery of care and improvement of that care at the bedside, but we know that a lot of research in healthcare is generated out of health centers, uh, you know, tertiary, quaternary, that don't necessarily uh, translate and are, be applicable to community hospital because we are fundamentally different. You'll have read papers that say, you know, this is actually an explanatory variable in the research that says, well, you know, it's different because community and teaching are different. And so then why are we necessarily looking at teaching hospital research outcomes and trying to apply them in the community mm -hmm. hospital setting? And so it behooves us as a community hospital to drive that forward and there are other community, large community hospitals that are also taking this under as a strategic, strategic imperative. And we are saying we need to build our own evidence and we need to find those partners to build that evidence. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so you have sort of given a bit of tips in there as well as how to engage. And so I wanted to just get some ideas from the panel uh, before I turn over to the audience on... Maybe some advice on if you were to start all over again to start your research project, some tips that you would give to other researchers or you know, on the clinical side, some tips you would give to researchers in engaging. So if we can start from Claudette and work our way uh, over to Catherine. Uh, so just to start all over again, uh, I would say it's, it's really looking at what, what is the question that you want to answer. And so <clears throat> in the clinical environment, while it, we, it's very complicated, you would assume that there are very complicated mechanisms in place to support that care that's delivered to the patient. Not necessarily so. There's often time, oftentimes I even say, are you kidding me? Are we really doing that? Like that, <laughs> that seems like how can we be doing that and delivering that level of care? And so really it's the most simplistic thing that could 
support or improve a workflow process mm -hmm. makes a world of difference and creates efficiencies and improved outcomes. And so really keeping it simple rather than complicated at the get-go. Um, and really what is going to be mutually beneficial, beneficial for the organization and for the researcher and how can we replicate that in other areas of the organization because the repeatable piece is really important yeah. um, and makes it more realistic for clinicians. So as clinicians do their day-to-day -day work, they see the patient and that's what they're doing. Uh, it's that surrounding environment of the active inquiry of how we can improve that care and those efficiencies that really support. So really at the beginning, it's looking at that simplistic function uh, and I think Helen can attest to this. It's, it's whereas we think things are very much uh, in the clouds almost, very theoretical, the practical piece can actually be quite surprising in terms of the simplicity that's needed mm -hmm. to improve uh, those processes. Nice. So Thanks. I think from a beginning, that's where you start. Great, thank you. Uh, Helen, anything you'd like to add as far as some th tips you've learned <laughs> from your process? Yeah, so I actually learned that I have ongoing um, a collaboration with the Mount Open Transplant Group in Toronto, which they are very much into the research, mm -hmm. versus uh, in Grand River, they are very much uh, into the operation. So I think these two representatives, my, uh, my understanding is that in Grand, when we are working with the, the transplant surgeons and uh, those people in Toronto, they actually don't, they, they get very curious and they want to say what is the difference between uh, their statistical analysis tool versus your data mining because Waterloo is very great with data mining and tell us and they will let's write some paper just for the sake of writing papers and discovery. <laughs> So that is, they are actually very interesting, and you get their time, they enthusiastic, and then they do things. But I think in uh, Grand River, it's very different. You said, okay, listen, we have these problems, and our chair is not enough. And if you can actually build a model, help us better organize our chair for their dialysis patient. Mm -hmm. That's a very real problem. It's very painful. The dialysis patient cannot go in. They said, can you actually help us? Now you, have, you help us with the data, now we have the data now, right? Uh, before they couldn't have the data. So now we help them and then they have a data, but well, what's the question they ask? So they ask is that, uh, well, we want to say how to operate our chairs and uh, our flows better if we can have a predictive model to say which day I will have this capacity and what kind of patient now I have, I can actually project into my bottleneck. And if you can help me solve that, that is what we really care about. They, they don't mind, they spend time, <laughs> effort, anything you want, anything you need, anybody you want to meet, they, they will be there right there. But if you say, okay, I want to say, uh, what's the difference between the data mining versus the statistical analysis tool? Then you will not find that research question <laughs> because they will not come forth <laughs> with that research question to begin with. So in the beginning, they said they like that, but then later they actually find that, oh, mm -hmm. you build, you help them build the moving the chair efficiently, and then later you will say, okay, what is your uh, patient-specific pathway, mm -hmm. right? So what is the best way or the, the, the personalized pathway? That is, in us, translated into a very interesting predictive modeling. But for them, it's to say when a patient comes and how I can direct them to a different path, and they translate it into their care daily. In the short term, they cannot wait for another five years. They have, won't have it tomorrow. <laughs> they want it. So that's a very short term type of agenda as well. You speak to them, and then they will have all the resources you need to help you with your research and data collection. So that's basically. Mm -hmm. I saw you I wanted to jump yeah, in. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just to make an observation uh, and, and ask a question of the audience. Does anybody here know what Helen's talking about when she says chairs? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> we know. We know. Sarah, and we're, and we're we know. And we're smiling. And yeah, because it's not chairs. She's talking about renal dialysis, and yeah. patients come in um, several days a week to be dialyzed, and they are physically in chairs. And so when we talk about, so this is the equivalent of a patient bed. And so I just wanted to highlight, this is what I mean when we say developing those relationships. She's talking hospital uh, mm -hmm. dialect. 
and, uh, and and I must say I'm I'm learning university dialect, even though I, I did my studies here. Um, but you know, in terms of navigating the university system and navigating the hospital system, this is this is a, a perfect example of a relationship with someone from the university who who actually gets what. And she, you didn't even notice you were doing that. <laughs> oh, we're, we're so proud of you. No. <laughs> Sorry, I lost the audience here. That's bad. That's bad. She's fully adopted now by the hospital culture. Thank you all. Yeah, so if you have a, one quick tip at the end, and then we'll open up to the Yeah, audience. I mean, I would say the thing I learned most was to be very participatory. So mm -hmm. to have them as part of developing my research question, um, I really learned, I came from, I mean, I graduated with my PhD over 20 years ago, and I came from a very individualistic research culture where the ideal paper was actually the sole authored paper. <laughs> and the next maybe acceptable one was you and your supervisor, you and your student, like a two author paper. And I learned that publications count, and it's publications in healthcare usually have much larger teams. And that's part of building those relationships, and that's actually very important. So it took me a while to kind of cross that barrier that you know, somebody who'd helped a little bit um, actually is going to be on my paper as well. You know, and that's actually a way of solidifying those relationships. And that was something that took me a while to learn because I didn't, I didn't get that for a bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so being very participatory, uh, helping them, letting them define your research question. I've always been able to get the research I wanted out of it, and they've only made my research better because they've made it better directed and um, more, more meaningful. And even nowadays, we've done a couple of grants lately where we're putting patients on our research teams because mm -hmm. I think that's sort of the next direction is um, back to comments about the patient experience mm -hmm. that we're, there's a lot of focus on being more patient oriented. And so we've um, been making some efforts to connect with patient advocates and people who are almost, I think of them as like professional patients who are very willing to be engaged in research like that. Awesome, thanks. So I've asked some questions just to kind of start the discussion, but I mean, this, this panel is for you. So if anyone in the audience has any questions that they'd like to ask as far as engaging in research, Christina is there with the mic, ready to run around. It's a very basic question probably, but uh, how do we start? Let's say a company or a group of students has a, good, uh, a great concept and they want to partner and research with the hospital. Uh, is more about finding the right person to talk or the hospitals have uh, official procedures and structures to first start? Uh, Sarah's going to talk about that um, uh, in the second half, but I think in a nutshell, uh, we have tried to create a single path to reduce the confusion for uh, researchers. And so that we worked really hard on that, and, and Leslie's created one door for me as well at the university. And so it's, it's through the research office. <laughs> right there. That's your point. Yes. Person. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. And, and, and I think it's not too fine a point to land on is that Sarah is a joint position uh, between the University of Waterloo and Grenver Hospital. So she is jointly funded by uh, our two institutions to support research from the University of Waterloo specifically, but she also serves for our other research activities with McMaster and, and others. Any other questions? Thank you. I really appreciate the efforts to uh, further the relationship between uh, the university and the hospital. I know we've been a, a beneficiary of that relationship in the past and hope to do so in the future. Um, I had a question. I was wondering if uh, there was some prospect that the new coordinated ethics approval process might one day be one approval process. Julie. Can you talk about that? Yes. <laughs> okay. I guess I can, I'll hold for that. Baby steps. Okay. Baby steps, I guess. Maybe yes. that's the answer for yeah. now. So any other questions about their experience? She's getting in her Fitbit steps for today. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for the, uh, all the useful uh, tips and advices. Okay, so I've been to uh, this meeting for a few times, and I believe okay, Leslie uh, remembered me in my faces. Okay, um, so I had a, some useful discussion with some of the people at uh, Grand River Hospital, and I visited their lab. They visited my lab, but somehow 
it just never, you know, nothing ever happened in the end. So I was wondering if there's something I did wrong. Okay, so I, <laughs> I'm wondering, okay, so if you can say something about uh, the do's and the don'ts, okay, that okay, we should be aware of, in particular, okay, maybe the don'ts part, that, uh, uh, that might uh, help us, you know, to uh, better uh, build up, you know, building up the, uh, the relationship. So I'll take a step at that first. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of your situation and, and who you interacted with, so I'll, I'll, I can only perhaps speak in general terms. Um, I think one of the things, uh, and, and not, I don't mean to make this uh, too light of a, an analogy, but Leslie and I have really talked about this uh, as a uh, introductory meeting, and, and we use the dating analogy. Uh, but um, I, I think it's 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 a pretty succinct uh, comparison because we haven't had the opportunity to meet, um, and between our organizations, uh, individuals, uh, groups, programs, that we want to set the stage for people to have an opportunity to meet, to hear, and 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 understand where there's common ground in terms of interests, and when that happens. Leslie and I say, okay, well, go forward and have your second date. Uh, and, and then that furthers and perhaps that led to a site visit and, and some sharing of information. I think one of the things for clinicians is that uh, they can become, well, they are very busy. Uh, I, you know, sometimes when I'm trying to get a meeting with the chief of staff, you know, I'm, it's not even just your experience, it's my experience too. Sometimes I'm, you know, looking three months into the calendar before I can get some time uh, with him and vice versa. So I think the reality is that there's, you know, 95% of the rest of their time is providing care um, and, and running the hospital. So it, not to be deterred uh, by a timetable that doesn't necessarily match up with the university uh, timetable. And, and, and I think that's some of the growing pains in terms of cycle time that happens at the hospital versus what's happening at the university. And, and Claudette um, said this already, but I think it's the communication piece that is really uh, f fundamental in terms of ensuring that, you know, uh, not to misinterpret perhaps, because uh, it, it, it might not have been a don't that caused uh, a, a break in what seemed to be, you know, a growing relationship, but it may just be a timing challenge. It, it uh, you know, to be fair though, there may have been a point um, where perhaps the research interest did diverge um, and and there, there, there was a bit of a, I would say, parting of the, the interest, and so it, it kind of fell off. Um, but uh, it's a big place, you know, we have, uh, you know, over 3,000 employees that work there, and, and I always forget how many docs, um, is it like 600? Wow. 600 docs, 28 midwives, uh, you know, like, so there's a lot of people there, and uh, so there's very few, um, clinical programs that are, are staffed only by, you know, a small number of clinicians. There are, certainly, because we are a community hospital, but largely we have multiple um, specialties, consultants uh, working in those programs. So uh, I, I think it's perseverance is, is um, a do, um, and um, I think using Sarah really, and, and the research office is really another avenue to, 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 um, to uh, take advantage of because Sarah knows everybody um, um, and I try to, you know, take that research interest and, and put sparks under people's um, feet to say, hey, you know, did you know that there's these inquiries that are coming in? Uh, and we have been successful uh, in doing that. And, and, but, you know, I, and to be very honest, uh, some of them have also not, not worked out. Um, but uh, I, I think it's um, very fair to say, though, that Granville Hospital wants to be your hospital as a research partner, just as um, we're hoping it's vice versa the same, that, that you, know, you want us to be your hospital in terms of a research partnership. Great. So maybe we can talk after more specifically about uh, you know, um, blowing some, you know, puffing some air onto those embers to see if we can get it back going. Mm -hmm. I actually also noticed that uh, Okay, for us, and uh, if we're interested, because we are trained and paid to be independent thinker, and if we find something interesting, and then you don't need to go to say, oh, I'll go check, to check my chair first. If he's interested, then I will do it. So we don't have that mindset. But I, I noticed that in the hospital, and very much like in the military, they are having this concerted effort. So people, you individually come to meet with you, sometimes have certain interests, but you actually need to reach their top 
and to see if they endorse it, they are interested, yeah. then that things can be arranged. So that we need to, that I find that mindset is very, very different. <laughs> you have to actually get to that. So many times you need to help him to reach his superior or his leader and to endorse that idea and something can happen. Because they don't have any mandate to do research, so to speak. They don't get paid, they don't get, yeah, they write a paper, don't really get any pay and get any recognition. They're not a U of T profs and they count their publication as outcome. So I think that's a fundamental difference. I, I, that is one of the things I feel if you always have to help them to reach yeah. their top. And secondly, that really, don't say I'm interested in this, I have this specialty. You said, what is your problem? <laughs> what is your <laughs> research question? And then just listen to them. You listen to them, what their problem, what their pain point, and you translate. Very easily you can translate them into this is a data mining issue, this is a building a model, that is a particular variance I need to go look for it. But, but, but just listen to them to say what is their problem and I find that that's always the best way to get connected and uh, then they are actually very happy. And often come, in the beginning, it's a very simple and kind of uh, not even a research question, <laughs> request, so to speak, but they always can generate into, very quickly can move into the training and the research opportunity. That's mm -hmm. uh, how I feel. Great. Yeah. Well, I just want to uh, close out this section. I mean, our, our panel members will be available, some of them will be available after uh, to talk more with uh, the audience. So I just want to thank everyone um, for being on the panel. Great discussion. I think great topics were brought up. And uh, some of the questions that were asked by the audience actually flows right into our second part, which is the mechanics of how do you start this process. So thank you very much. Thank you.